Hello and welcome to this short video guide on using Entry 1 and Entry 2 pre-vocational studies to teach your ICT provision. My name is Kelly Adams and I'm the product manager for Entry Level 1 Personal Growth and Wellbeing and Work Skills and I'll be taking you through some short examples and some short information to help you be able to do this. The need to develop an alternative to the ICT functional skills which is now defunded is borne out by the fact that the new replacement digital functional skills is only available at entry 3 and level 1. Therefore, there's a need to help support centres to develop their ICT provision for lower ability learners. So this short recording is all about how you can use pre-vocational studies, one of our existing qualifications, to be able to deliver your ICT provision to entry 1 and level 2 learners flexibly. So first of all, let's have a look at what pre-vocational study is. Pre-vocational study is a flexible qualification. What that means is it's a suite of pre-vocational qualifications that offer ability for learners to proceed to vocational qualifications. And these are mainly focused on skills based um, development of activities rather than actually engaging in lots of written work, which is perfect for this level of learner. The qualifications focus on skills. So each of the qualifications have a number of units within them that focus on the development of practical learning skills for these kind of learners. So this lends itself really well to ICT, um, which is what you're looking to do um, in terms of your provision here. So the context for teaching, learning and assessment can be really flexible and can really benefit your level of learners. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we've selected this to help support you to deliver and develop your entry level one and two ICT um, qualifications for your learners. Now, one of the benefits of this pre-vocational study is that it really stands out and allows learners to find interest and develop their interest in different kind of sector areas. Obviously, you've identified the need that these learners might want to go into ICT. So we can use this qualification to explore this pre-vocational sector and that will help them to develop an informed decision on whether they want to go and study ICT next or something else. But either way, whether they want to go and study ICT or not, ICT skills are much valued in society uh, and will help to support them with independent living as well. Now, one of the other benefits of pre-vocational study is that it can be used in different combinations. So there are no core units, there are no prerequisites, there's no um, person telling you to do this unit and then do that unit and those kind of things. You're literally free to develop this qualification however you want to. And that's one of the benefits, one of the beauties of this qualification, that you can actually do that. You can pick the units that are right for you and your learners and you can deliver them. What I'm going to show you today in terms of how you can deliver ICT it's just one of many potential options that you could do uh, when using this pre-vocational study programme. So let's have a look now at how we can use pre-vocational studies to replace functional skills ICT at entry one and two, which unfortunately is now defunded. So these qualifications, by the way, are on the Pearson Qualifications website. If you want to learn more about pre-vocational studies, if you look on the Pearson Qualifications website and look for pre-vocational studies, entry one and two, you'll be able to see the specification there. So let's have a look at how we can adapt to these qualifications. So first of all, let's have a look at entry one and entry two. So entry one, we've developed um, two options for you here. So one is a 30 hour guided learning unit. So if you were to do the 30 guided learning hour unit, you could just choose one of these two units. If you were to do the award, the benefit of doing the award is it's 60 guided learning hours, which is the same as what you were doing for and also on the new digital functional skills. So if you wanted something that was more comparable, it's advantageous to do the two units. So the units we've selected that most closely resemble your opportunities to teach ICT are Unit 9 and Unit 19. You can see the same on Entry 2. So you can see that actually the development between Entry 1 and Entry 2. So if you look on the subsidiary awards, you can see uh, for entry one, it's developing digital communication skills and on entry two, it's using digital skills. So you can see the step up there, which is quite nice. Again, with entry two, if you want to do the subsidiary award, 
you pick one unit of the two. If you want to do entry two and ward, you will need to pick both of those units. But again, if there are other units that you want to do and give them an ICT context, by all means do that because this is just one of the possible ways in which you could deliver this. For example, other units that might work quite well here and offer contextualized opportunities that you can translate into teaching ICT skills might be, for example, unit 1, unit 8, unit 11, unit 13, unit 18 are the most suitable if you wanted to develop some kind of other contextualization or if you wanted to teach the higher um, GLH awards like the certificate. That's what, where you could look to help you. Um, and guide you with that okay so let's have a look at our teaching pack that we've made available for you so what we've done is we've taken um, a look at these units and tried to develop a package for you that you can pick up use adapt however you want to to support you with the fact that we don't no longer have the entry one entry two functional skills it which is a shame so what we've got together is we've got a combined scheme of work. So in the pack we're going to look at in a minute, there's a combined scheme of work for both Unit 9 and Unit 19. So the schemes of work will allow you to develop your teaching of this qualification and these units in preparation for the assessment. So there's lots of teaching ideas, activities and those kind of things to help you manage that. We've also thought it's very important to include some tutorial ideas. Many of your, our centres also have to develop pastorally learners. And so what we've decided to do is give you some ideas of how you could do that. So we've given you some ideas of what you could cover, perhaps in tutorials or in wider learning opportunities to really help develop your ICT provision for these learners. These learners, more than anything, would really benefit from having strong ICT skills as it will allow them to be more independent in later life. And of course, accessibility wise, if they have some sort of disability or they're differently able, having access to ICT and having those accessibility options is going to be really useful for them. And then finally, we've got a sign up brief guidance. So what we've done is we've written some easy to pick up and teach or adapt if you want the assignment briefs that we've written. We've written them with an ICT focus because that's what we're doing here. Of course, if you look at this qualification, if it will actually would like to do something else with it, by all means, you can do that. That's not a problem at all. So let's have a look at the teaching pack. And I'll just go through what we've got there so you can see the kind of resources that you have available to you. So here is the guide that you can download by visiting our website. I'm going to entry one and level one qualifications. You will see this either under entry level one or entry level two under resources, or you will see it on our main landing page at the right hand side. So this is our guide that we've produced for you to help um, support you. Please note that currently this is only available for 16 to 18 and 19 plus learners. So unfortunately, if you are a school at this time, you will not be able to be funded if you were to use this. So we've got a little bit of information here about pre vocational studies. We've got a little bit of information about not being uh, being fit for purpose and how you can use this to develop your ICT qualification. And then we've got some examples of how we can develop that as we've previously discussed. So then what comes, as I said, is we've created schemes of work for you. So these are quite long and you can see from here the learning aims A and B for each of the units, the kind of things you need to teach. And then you can also see here uh, by each session, the kind of activities that you can actually do. So we've done this for entry one, for unit 19 and unit nine. And we've also done this for entry two, for again, unit 19 and unit nine. Please note the activities will be different because of the levels. So if you're planning on using this to support you or to adapt, please make sure you follow the right scheme of work um, because that's important. So at the bottom of this, once we have got there, you will see some tutorials and some suggested things you can do in your pastoral care in order to develop some of the key aspects of ICT skills, which again at this level are really important to try and help learners become more independent or move on to the next stage of their learning. We've got some ideas about things you could do that we've not included. So all of these things happen between September and December. So if you wanted to take a particular slant, for example, 
if you wanted to do breast cancer awareness month and you wanted them to use the IT I don't know, to create a presentation that's brief or look something up, you could use that um, as an example. We've then got some ideas about how you could develop some other things to have an ICT focus that you might be doing elsewhere in your curriculum or you might want to do it as well as well. So to kind of strengthen their abilities at ICT at this level. We've then got some ideas for charity events because charity events might happen within your setting. Now, ICT students by their nature tend to be quite shy, not always, but they do tend to be. So they might not want to participate necessarily in a charity event, but they might be able to support it and that might give them good practice with skills. So if your school is hosting Macmillan Coffee Morning, then you might ask them to make a poster or send an email out to other students about it. I've seen this work quite well in a college setting and I think it does help learners to become more confident and see the practical nature of their skills. Finally, we come on to assignment brief guidance. Note these are exemplars, they're not authorised assignment briefs, so you need to make sure they go through the quality assurance process. They're simply here to give you a guide as to what you could do if you were to use entry one and entry two to teach your ICT qualification. So you can see there, they're separate into tasks. Now at the top here, the qualification, you need to select the relevant one. Of course, if you're doing the bigger one, you would need to change that as well. So you can see there, we've produced all these assignment briefs. So now let's talk about benefits to learners. So the first benefit to learner of doing an ICT related qualification is that there is more engagement. Students tend to engage more when they have a computer or a laptop to engage with them. And that kind of comes from the fact that they're stimulated. So they're able to, for example, use their hands while they're using their eyes. It's a more practical way of learning. So you tend to find students on ICT courses become more engaged because of all the different interactive elements. Also, as well, if they're using accessibility tools, automatically makes them more engaged because they understand and they can access it the information that's been taught. It also helps to enhance the individual learning environment. So learning, for example, how to use a search engine, allowing selection of information yourself, allowing yourself to learn how to be safe online, all supports that independent learning that is so important. And obviously at this level, what we're trying to do is get the learners to be more independent. So using an ICT qualification in that um, to help them do that is really beneficial. Also, it helps them to have a broad range, as I've just mentioned, of accessible resources. So it allows them to have read and write. It allows them to use different kind of accessible machinery in order to access the curriculum in a way that they can if it's paper based. So that's really useful, particularly as a life skill to these learners later on, where they carry on the use of those kind of accessibility tools later on in life. And that allows them, to, for example, to be able to manage a bank account successfully and those kind of things. Finally, information technology really benefits and really enables vocational schools. So obviously we're at the pre-vocational stage. What we want to do, if we can, is to get them to the vocational stage and get them into the world of work. So information technology opens up lots of possibilities for them to be able to learn about the world of work, to be able to learn about different industries in a way that talking about it doesn't there's so many videos there's so many activities there's so many websites that they can look at and that again builds those independent learning skills which is so beneficial to this level of learner so that's the end of my brief recording i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that made it clear to you how you could potentially use pre-vocational study entry one and entry two as a replacement for your functional skills uh, my name is kelly adams please feel free to contact me in customer service chat if you've got any questions about this or if you need any guidance and support in order to essentially restore your ICT provision within your college. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Goodbye.